What if waste could be transformed into clean energy while also offering a space for recreation? In Copenhagen, this vision has become a reality with the construction of Copen Hill, a cutting-edge waste-to-energy plant that burns 440,000 tons of waste annually, generating enough electricity and district heating for 150,000 homes. Not only does it have one of the cleanest incinerators in the world, but its design also includes a 9,000 square meter artificial ski slope, an 85 meter high climbing wall, and a 490 meter hiking trail. Copen Hill turns the concept of sustainability into a multifunctional space, providing both energy and a unique recreational area. With a project cost of $670 million and its aim to support Copenhagen's carbon neutral goals by 2025, the plant sets new standards for waste management and urban innovation. Could this be the solution for cities around the world to tackle waste and energy challenges? In recent years, cities worldwide have faced growing challenges in managing waste and providing clean energy to their expanding populations. As urban centers grow, so does the need for innovative solutions to deal with waste sustainability, while also addressing the pressing issue of climate change. In Denmark, the situation was no different. Copenhagen, the country's capital, needed an answer to its increasing waste problem, especially with the city's aim to become carbon neutral by 2025. This need for a sustainable, practical solution led to the development of Copen Hill, a project designed not only to manage waste, but also to rethink the role of industrial infrastructure in urban spaces. It aimed to turn waste into energy while serving as a multifunctional hub, combining a waste to energy plant with recreational activities. Built in the early 2010s, Copen Hill was conceived as a model of urban sustainability, reflecting Copenhagen's ambition to reduce its carbon footprint. The plant, which officially opened in 2017, processes over 400,000 tons of waste annually, generating clean energy that powers and heats thousands of homes. But its innovation goes beyond energy production. Copen Hill also offers a ski slope, hiking trails, and a climbing wall, creating a unique public space at the heart of an industrial facility. With its iconic design, Copen Hill exemplifies how infrastructure can align with environmental and societal needs. But what technical feats were required to bring this bold vision to life? And how does a waste-to-energy plant double as an urban playground? Structurally, Copen Hill stands as one of Copenhagen's tallest landmarks, rising to almost 100 meters. To support the facility's monumental height, approximately 2,400 reinforced concrete piles were driven deep into the ground to ensure stability. The building's core structure is composed of 5,000 tons of steel, reinforced by 35,000 cubic meters of concrete, creating a sturdy framework capable of withstanding the massive weight of its machinery and recreational areas. To expedite construction and reduce the impact of weather delays, many elements of the structure were prefabricated. These prefabricated panels were designed with precise dimensions to ensure seamless assembly, which allowed construction teams to piece together the building efficiently despite Copenhagen's unpredictable weather conditions. The precision of this construction process was essential, as the plant's functionality depended on the proper alignment of its energy production systems with the rooftop's recreational amenities. The facade of Copen Hill is another significant feature of its design. Wrapped in 1.2 meter tall and 3.3 meter wide aluminum bricks, the facade provides not only a striking visual aesthetic, but also practical functionality. These bricks are arranged in a staggered pattern, allowing natural light to filter into the building's interior through glazed windows embedded between the aluminum panels. This interplay of light and shadow adds depth to the building's appearance, while ensuring that the workspaces inside remain well lit during the day. The use of aluminum also offers thermal insulation, helping to regulate the temperature inside the facility and reduce energy consumption. Beneath this sleek exterior, the plant is powered by cutting-edge waste-to-energy technology. 
Copen Hill burns approximately 440,000 tons of waste per year, converting it into both electricity and district heating. At the heart of this operation are two massive furnace lines, each capable of burning 25 to 35 tons of waste per hour. These furnaces use a great fired boiler system, which is designed to maximize energy extraction from the waste. The boilers generate high pressure steam at 440 degrees Celsius and 70 bar, which drives turbines that produce electricity for the city's grid. At the same time, the steam is used to provide district heating to over 150,000 homes in Copenhagen, making the plant an integral part of the city's energy infrastructure. The flue gas cleaning system is another vital component of Copenhill's operations. Unlike older waste-to-energy plants, which often emitted harmful pollutants, Copenhill is equipped with a state-of-the-art system that scrubs more than 99% of harmful substances from its emissions. The plant's wet cleaning system removes hydrochloric acid, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxides from the exhaust gases, ensuring that only clean air is released into the atmosphere. Additionally, electronic filters capture fly ash and other particulates, while scrubbers neutralize harmful substances before they can be emitted. This meticulous attention to environmental safety makes Copenhill one of the cleanest waste-to-energy plants in the world. One of the most innovative features of Copenhill's flue gas cleaning system is its ability to reduce solid waste output by 45% compared to traditional methods. By using a wet cleaning system, the plant generates three types of waste products, fly ash, filter cakes from wastewater cleaning, and gypsum from the sulfur dioxide removal process. These byproducts are treated and either recycled or safely disposed of, further minimizing the plant's environmental footprint. The wastewater produced during the flue gas cleaning process is also treated before being discharged into the nearby Orison Sea, ensuring that it meets the strict environmental standards set for water quality. However, the environmental challenges faced during the construction and operation of Copen Hill were not limited to emissions control. The plant's design had to account for the growing need for waste management while ensuring that it did not become a detriment to the city's ambitious carbon neutrality goals. The plant's designers originally envisioned a chimney that would emit smoke rings, one ring for each ton of CO2 saved compared to the previous plant. This feature was intended to engage the public in a conversation about waste and sustainability, but it had to be abandoned. The installation would have used valuable steam that could otherwise be harnessed for energy production, reducing the plant's overall efficiency. Budgetary constraints were another hurdle in the construction process. Initially projected to cost around $500 million, the total cost of Copen Hill rose by nearly 10% due to delays and unforeseen technical challenges. The integration of recreational features such as the ski slope, hiking trails, and climbing wall added complexity to the construction process. These additions required careful consideration of safety standards, as well as the need to balance public access with the plant's industrial operations. Despite these challenges, the project was completed in 2017, with the ski slope and other recreational amenities opening to the public in 2019. Once construction was completed, Copen Hill quickly became a popular destination for both locals and tourists. The ski slope, which spans 9,000 square meters, offers year-round skiing on a custom-designed artificial surface. This surface, made from green-blue plastic, mimics the feel of snow, allowing skiers to glide down the slope in all seasons. For those who prefer other activities, the facility also includes a hiking trail that winds its way up the side of the building, providing panoramic views of Copenhagen from the rooftop. Additionally, the 85-meter climbing wall on the building's facade is the tallest artificial climbing wall in the world, attracting thrill-seekers from around the globe. The rooftop itself is more than a recreational area. It is also a green space designed to absorb heat, reduce stormwater runoff, and filter air pollutants. Hundreds of trees, bushes, and grasses were planted on the roof to create a natural alpine environment, adding biodiversity to the urban landscape. 
This green roof not only enhances the visual appeal of Copen Hill, but also serves a practical purpose in reducing the building's environmental impact. By incorporating sustainable design elements like this, Copen Hill demonstrates that industrial infrastructure can coexist with nature in a harmonious way. However, operational challenges continue to affect the plant. Denmark's increasing recycling efforts and reduced waste generation have decreased the amount of local waste available for incineration. To address this shortfall, Copen Hill has had to import waste from other countries, including the UK. This practice has sparked controversy, as some critics argue that transporting waste across borders adds to the environmental footprint and could discourage further efforts to reduce and recycle waste at the source. The construction of Copen Hill was a complex and challenging process, but the result is a groundbreaking facility that redefines the role of waste to energy plants in urban environments. By combining state-of-the-art technology with recreational amenities and sustainable design, Copen Hill has become both a functional power plant and a social hub for the people of Copenhagen. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on notifications for future content.